Hello everyone, welcome back to the Super Heavy Applications Program in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul, where I'm testing out various applications of Super Heavy that don't involve starships, so nefarious things we could do with the really large stage. And in the previous video, I started out this mission head to the moon. It is a mission with Orion and the Blue Moon Mark II lander. So a combination moon mission, all launched on Super Heavy with a hydrogen-oxygen stage, well, two hydrogen-oxygen stages, really. Uh, so it was using Super Heavy as the first stage for a Saturn V setup. And as a Saturn V setup, it is possible for Super Heavy to launch 100 tons to the moon, though in this case we were just launching 90 tons, and we were a little bit shy because I reserved too much in Super Heavy for its return. Uh, so let's just say 90 tons to the moon for now and so double the capacity of Saturn V. If only it had hydrogen, oxygen upper stages to work with, but alas, those are difficult to make. So anyway, but in Kerbal Space Program we can do it. So here we are in Lunar SOI, not so that you'd notice, because uh, well, the moon is in the glare of the sun and it's very shadowy. It's a, it's a dark blob in front of us somewhere over there. And we are going to head in. So this is what the situation looks like. And yeah, you can see that it's very much not visible right now. And we're just going to capture, but we have to capture separately. So that's tricky. <laughs> um, uh, the reason we have to capture separate, I mean, uh, we could just use the lander to capture both or Orion to capture both, but they're using different propellants. And if we use one or the other, we're maybe going to be lacking delta V in one part of the thing or the other, either uh, to land and get back to orbit or to return to Earth. So instead of trying to do them both at the same time, I've already transferred three crew into the Blue Moon lander, and we're going to do them both separately. So one way to manage this is maybe to have one be in a higher orbit. And this will be a better time to do that than later. So I'm going to undock them. This side has a fuel cell. That's why it doesn't have solar panels. So we're starting the fuel cell and it has Jeb, Bill, and Bob. Val is the one tasked to remain in orbit for them. Both will capture into loose orbits first. Now oh, that isn't giving us much more time. It's like two seconds. But, all right, we're going to leave that like that. And the lander will capture first, I think. So let's just see how much Delta V Orion has all on its own. 1,022. That's tight. Change of plans. We're going to redock them, and the lander will get both of them into orbit. This is, this is maybe not working out great. I mean... It depends on the timing of it, because since we're going to be capturing into a loose orbit, maybe I can figure it out. Okay, well, you know what? Hold on. We won't redock them. And I'm going to save here. And I think because we're going to be in a loose orbit, it might be easier to break orbit. It would assume that we're going to break orbit at an opportune time, which we're not here. Like, if we capture into orbit like this, this is not the side that we would want to return to Earth on. We would want to return to Earth on that side, when our apoapsis is facing the opposite direction. So, or relative op opposite direction to the Moon's motion. At least I hope that's how that works. So... Yeah, I'm thinking that that's how that works, but I don't know. Um, we might be in a little bit of a pickle. We'll see. Darn Orion service module. What do we do with you? Okay, so we'll do them separately. We'll try that. And then if it fails, I'll try the other way with the lander doing everything. But at least we should try it once with uh, Orion capturing itself. So... I think we can just activate everything on here. It does have a fair amount of delta V. 5,648. We really only need uh, 4,400 for the landing. The rest of it is getting from the high orbit down and from 
the low orbit up. Which is still a lot. Okay, well, we'll focus on this first. We'll do its burn a little bit ahead of time. So that we have time for Orion. And I'll just leave it in this loose orbit for now. Now, each piece has more than 18 days, well, let's say 17 days worth of supplies. Oh, we see a glint of moon there. Okay, capture burn. Okay, I think that was lower than I wanted. All right, we have captured today in 15 hour orbit. Switching to Orion, if I can. Okay, well, it's already going up again. Let's not waste time. Ah, there's still a seam in the moon textures. And selling fuel down. Ignition. Okay, we'll keep it into the higher orbit. So it's up there like that. And it'll hang out. Now, for now, it has maybe a good amount. 841. Uh, let me just see. Let me just see. Let's say we plot a burn here, but in 14 days. Or after three orbits, because it's a four-day orbit. So that's the trick with Orion, is that... It, it, unlike Apollo, you can't just go back any time. But if you go back at the right time, it can cost a really low amount, except Kerbal isn't really sure how much. Um, yeah, so that's... If you're NASA, you can make this happen really efficiently. And so the fact that it doesn't have that much delta V, as long as it stays in the high orbit, it has to get to the moon at a certain time and come back at a certain time. But as long as you do that, uh, should be a way to figure this out. Maybe. <laughs> it's not working great for me right now. So we're looking at about 620, though it's not 100% certain about that right now. And we do have that much. We have 841. So we're going to leave it here, and we're going to go back to the lander. So this now has 5,455. The minimum that we need for landing is like 2,400. You can see our surface velocity there, and I need a little bit more than that. Um, but we're probably going to need a lot more than that, say 3,000. It's going to be tight. And we have, we, we have this 25 minute burn time right now. Now, some of that will be just getting from the high orbit to low orbit, so that'll be all right. But still, it's tricky. So it is sort of like how it would be, except Orion would be at Lunar Gateway in a polarish orbit, not this orbit. We'll do, we'll get into low orbit first instead of trying to pack it into the landing burn. We could do it all at once, go straight from high orbit to the landing, but I somehow doubt NASA would do that. I think they would get it to low orbit first anyway. So 624 to get to low orbit from the high orbit. This area wouldn't be too bad for a landing. Ignition. Okay, burn complete. And yeah, let's go around. I'll probably bring this end down and we'll land here actually. So let's say, just as a reference. Mare Imbrium. Now, is there a bit that's sort of... Okay, so Earth is there. We might as well face Earth. Well, it's all facing Earth really. We'll just go smack in the middle of it. Well, I somehow got the moon landscape that has a lot of seams in this particular install. Got the good Earth stuff, but not the good moon stuff. Okay, well, a little bit of ignition. After this, we have seven ignitions on these left. Okay, that'll be a good enough setup. Hopefully not bumping into anything along the way. Really, anywhere around here will be fine. Let's go surface negative. 
10 minutes to periapsis. Well, that should give us enough time to do the burn. So really we should be maybe 5 minutes to that point would be best. The RCS thrusters are not as efficient as the engines, so every time that we use them it's a waste. Um, I put additional ones down here because the originals didn't seem to be working. It doesn't actually show... oh yeah, 242 seconds ISP because it's Hydrolox gas. So not great at all. Okay, let's give it a go. I'll need more information here. I haven't got my windows configured per normal. The suicide burn countdown business is a bit complicated, given the circumstances. There's a mountain right there, but we're not in line with it. Yeah, I still got the one with little bumps all over the place. And now there's a full ridge in front of us. <laughs> um, pick the flattest area I could and there's a ridge in front of us somehow. Well, that's the, actually the end there, probably. We should land short, short of that. I definitely overflew the intended landing spot, but I didn't really care about that. As long as we land in here, it's fine. And we're trying. Suicide burn countdown still negative, so I'm keeping the pitch. But uh, that does tend to extend us a little bit. Okay, two seconds on the suicide burn countdown. That is what we are working with. It's basically been full thrust all the way down. Oh, I'll take five seconds. Oop, oop, a little bit too hard. Uh, okay, 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 stay there. All right. We have landed. I'm not going to pop them out. That's not the point of this. We're not going to plant any flags here. We have landed. We have 2,941, which I think should be enough. So that part's okay. But we have to get back to Orion. And Orion is not going to help. That's an interesting way to go out. But anyway. Yeah. That is the plan. And we can have a little stay here. We should simulate the stay on the surface. Let's say we stay for... Well, I don't know exactly how long. Let's say four days for the first try. And that should give me enough buffer there. Because we have to rendezvous too, so... Basically, in waiting, we're simulating the fact that it's going to get out of plane. Wow, the icon is not great. But yeah, we're simulating how, you know, how it is when it's totally out of plane. You can see it's way above way north of the orbit of Orion, so it just makes it harder on me. I don't know why I'm making it harder on myself, but here we are. Okay, we just need to go eastward, I think. So RCS on again, and punch it. Whoa, serious weird effects there. Okay. Up we go. We'll get into a low orbit first and then figure things out. Right now we certainly can't match inclinations with it. And we wouldn't want to match orbits with it here anyway because we want to sort of match periapses, so... We'll definitely get into a low orbit first. And then we'll burn out of that location rather than we are where we are right now. Well, skimming right along, we've uh, kept a fair amount of Delta V to spare here. We're pretty tight, though. Okay, that's fine by me. 50 by 26.6. And we've got 1,056 to work with, but we've got an interesting situation. So, what I'd like to do is eventually meet up with it up there, where it'll be easier to correct the inclination. And that will take a few orbits, but I think we have that kind of time. And then we have a relative speed of 107, so 
we're looking at 750, let's say, which we do have. Uh, that's a little bit too much separation. Let me try and tweak that a bit. Okay, there we go. Uh, point, actually, 0.4 kilometers away, 104.2 meters per second up there with this burn down here of 640.3. If we can do it all really precisely. But anyway, burn time 1 minute and 45 seconds, so that's not too bad. But we have to wait a day and 21 hours. So we probably should, well, I, well yeah, we probably should have just stayed at the surface for a day and 21 hours. Uh, well, not 21 hours, but some amount of time, just another day would have been good. So we'll meet up with it in two days, and then our exit's in three days and 16 hours, it says. That's all right. But actually, being able to phase with a spacecraft again is easier when that other spacecraft is in a high orbit like this than when it's in low orbit. If there was this huge inclination difference, both of them being in a low orbit actually makes that more difficult. And if you're going to have a long stay on the surface, eventually they're going to get out of line with each other because of the rotation of the moon. So some of the criticisms of like having the halo orbit, the high orbit that Lunar Gateway is in, doesn't really take all these things into consideration. I mean, at a surface level, if you will, uh, having the operations all be at low lunar orbit seems to be a good idea. But when you think about inclination changes necessary to rendezvous and stuff like that, then having one of the pieces be in high orbit actually helps. It puts more of a burden on the lander, but if we do get to a future where the lander can refuel on the surface of the moon, then it's better not to get more fuel in the Earth return craft since that fuel will probably have to come from Earth. It'd be better to have a more capable lander that can refuel on the surface than to have a more capable Orion-like spacecraft, which isn't going to really be refueled from the surface, but will have instead storable fuels instead of hydrolocks because then they'll be reliable. Uh, reliable in terms of uh, simpler, basically. Hopefully the lander is also reliable. Uh, not, not exactly what I was bargaining for, but 4.5 is close enough, I'll take that. Okay, up we go. Meeting up with Orion. Okay, there it is, 16 kilometers away. The moon... Probably still obscured by the sun, I don't know. Uh, Earth's there. I'm sure the moon's somewhere around. Actually, we should be pointed more at it. Um, oh, there it is. Just a little sliver. There's the moon. The engines currently have four more ignitions left. So we will have three ignitions to spare out of ten originally. Okay, I think we'll have to do the rest with RCS. I think I'll accept that closest approach distance, 77 meters. Uh, it's 2.1 we'll have to be careful with. Well, we'll use a trivial amount of fuel. So we basically had 270 left, not huge margins. Okay, we have connected. Transferring Kerbals. Sorry about the RAS prop monitor configuration error. That's a uh, Orion pod thing. Again, I'll take a look at Artemis construction kit when I have the time. Okay, they are all in Orion now. And I, I think we can just transfer food and such. I mean, yeah, it's probably safer to do that. Yeah, let's do that. We can dump it if it turns out it's too heavy, but I don't think it's going to be too heavy anyway. Oops, no, I didn't mean dump it now. Oh, I dumped it already. Oh, shoot. 
Okay, well, a fat-fingered move made me dump the food, but we managed to transfer the water and oxygen. So, let's see, how much... Uh, four days and 18 hours of food remaining. That's probably not enough, but they probably don't die if they're out of food for a short amount of time. Five days and five hours, they can do without food for probably a day. So, I think it'll be alright. Uh, if I'm wrong... Well, shucks. Uh, that is a fault of tech life support. I mean, uh, we're talking about nine out, uh, yeah, nine hours worth of not having food. I think most people can deal with that, and certainly Kerbals can. After all, they went many hundreds of years without food. <laughs> anyway, uh, but we have our node in one day and eleven hours. That's gonna take six twenty-two. We have eight hundred and two now. Uh, we previously saw the Delta V with just one person in and perhaps not as much of the stuff. I need. I can dump the waste and waste water. That gives us five extra meters per second. Okay, so we are now waiting for the node. It's possible if we had just the right location, right? Our apoapsis is not quite in the best location. It should be over here. If it was over here, then we probably wouldn't be burning out from there. We'd be burning at periapsis, in which case it would be better, and that'd be the way NASA does it. So it's just a matter of the exact timing, but it does limit the opportunities to go back home. But that would be more delta V efficient by quite a lot, actually, I think. Because breaking orbit should not take that much more than making orbit. Uh, we got into this orbit with 200, we should be able to break orbit with the same. But, since I have extra, I'll take this much liberty. So, Earth back there. Moon right there. I'm just gonna say ahead of time that if it turns out that the heat shield is not good, I'm still considering that a win, <laughs> right? I mean, part configuration errors notwithstanding, okay? Or parachutes or something, I don't know. Whatever else goes wrong at this point, as long as we get back home, it's a win. Okay, ignition. Burn time, 8 minutes. Okay, well, did the burn precisely. And the periapsis is just a little bit off. It's a good question what will be best, but... Certainly we need it in the atmosphere. I'm going to go with 57. And we ended up with nearly 200 to spare. So it seems to be my go-to margin around here. Of course, uh, there were earlier problems that caused us to use extra from Orion that we wouldn't have otherwise used. But it is doubtful that this service module could capture it as well as the very, very, very heavy and large lander. You've seen the lander next to it. This thing is not going to capture that lander around the moon. That's unlikely. So that's a 60 ton lander. This can handle like lunar gateway modules, but those are the lighter. Food running out. Yeah, I know. He might actually be coming in on the daylight side this time. It's a little bit fuzzy looking right now. Because of the time warp, I guess. Whatever special effects our sister born has gets fuzzy during time warp. Oh, now it's all clear. Always make sure to top off the pod top up the pod. The pod seems fine. It's got all the stuff. Alright. Service module jettison. Off that goes. These little RCS thrusters don't actually have visible puffs, but they're there. It's not a reaction wheel, I just wanted you to know that. Turning descent mode on, hopefully it'll do good things for us. <laughs> we'll see. Depends. Okay, we are now in the atmosphere. It's a little bit slow right now as it's figuring out how to make things look. Uh, there's some heating things going on here. 
But I don't like it. Okay, the heat shield sucks. Please, pod. <laughs> it's because they changed the way the heat shields worked a bit. So now the pod has better heat tolerance. I've fixed it before for other pods. I just hadn't fixed it for this one because I don't manage the configurations for this particular mod, right? I have my own mods to deal with. But uh, all right, maybe maybe I have to fix this one as well. I had fixed the SLS tanks to get them more accurate too. So I'll just have to remember to fix the heat shield. Okay, well I had said before, it would have worked. It's just some configuration nonsense. So yeah, we're going to go with that. System works. Kerbal and realism overhaul maybe have some complicated issues. So sorry about that, but darn it. It's an idea. Is it an idea that they will ever do? No, because they're not gonna develop those huge hydrolock stages. But it would have been nice instead of refueling Starship 10, 12, 14 times, however many times that they have to do it. It's a lot of times. So, yeah, that's my position and I'm sticking to it. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.